I was going to just take care of myself and whatever I wanted in life, I was going to pursue it and go and get it. And I didn't need anyone to help me. While I think it is wise to be able to have marketable skills for yourself to build a business, to be able to uh, make a high living for yourself, I do think that we tend to push a lot of men out because we show that off a little much. Hello beautiful ones and welcome back to my channel. I am here with you for another week of the Empowered Wife book discussion. This book is by Laura Doyle. Of course it's linked down below and if you are just now joining me a special welcome to you. I'm excited that you have joined me and found my channel through this series because this has been a very meaningful series to my personal level up journey. I have been sharing my level up journey here on YouTube since 2020. I have been working on my transformation from broke beach bum into feminine, elegant, and affluent woman. And so that's typically what I discuss with you here each week. I typically upload on Sundays and would love to have you subscribe and join me along the way. Today is going to be all about skill number five, which is reveal your heart with vulnerability. And before I dive in, I did want to say that, you know, especially for those of you who are just now joining me, and you, if you have not read the book, if you have not picked this up, you're not familiar with Laura Doyle's work, then I definitely want to say she is writing this to married women, okay, who are seeking to repair and restore and reconcile and just overall improve their marriage. And that's, that's noble work because in this day and age, you know, we see so many women and just men that are having issues and it's leading to high divorce rates. And Laura really does not believe in divorce. And so of course there is some controversial stuff in here. Again, if you have not seen the first video, I cover some of the disclaimers and things that you know, should go without saying when it comes to these marriage relationships and whether to leave your man so you can level up with another or stay with the one you have because you love him and you know that there's still hope for your marriage and your relationship to improve and ultimately be one of your best assets to your life. Not only that, but I think that, you know, someone said, I think just be single, you know, and that's not really what everyone is looking for in life. Like I, the single older ladies that I know who just never married, they, they're not hundred percent happy. I think they're very kind to themselves. They have, you know, overall their own, you know, a healthy picture of their own self worth. There is a deeper depth and greater fulfillment to life when you share it with someone that you love and you build a family around that. And that's something that I have learned in the past year and a half or so, especially since becoming a mother, I've been married for almost seven years. And so that is where I am at. I'm not a marriage expert, but I'm certainly looking to feel more empowered as a wife so that I can have many, many more years of building wealth with my husband, building a family, building just a, an overall beautiful life that we fully enjoy waking up to every day. When it comes to being vulnerable, it is risky. And that's the first line that Laura starts out with. If what you want is intimacy, she says you must be vulnerable. So that communicates to me that it's not an option to just pull ourselves up every day by our bootstraps and be the tough boss chicks that we can be very, very rightly so. Um, she says that we must be vulnerable and it feels risky and it is. And that's why I think a lot of women don't fully express their vulnerability or let themselves be vulnerable in their marriages and in relationships because it, it is a very risky thing. I I 100% agree with that and I will admit that a lot of my default when I have disagreements on my husband is to be very defensive and to pretend like I'm not hurt and like I'm going to keep moving on with or without him. You know, that's just me being honest right up front. What I love about Laura's pr presentation of each skill is that she gives you the prescription at the beginning of the skill. So this one starts out by saying to practice being vulnerable, start by admitting that you're hurt instead of defending yourself. And then she's got a few more things here, but for time, I'm not gonna go into those. So just admitting that you're hurt, it seems like a simple thing to do, but really I think it is harder for us than we care to really kind of look at right now, you know? Um, and so chapter 19, we're gonna start out, I'm gonna go through these chapters with you and we're gonna talk a little bit more about this. Now, this is 
titled, <laughs> What Made Your Man Fall For You And Still Melts Him Every Time? Now, I I will admit in this chapter, I, um, I thought, well, that's different for every woman, right? We're all so unique. Our relationships are also unique. We all have a different aspect or characteristic of ourselves that our man was attracted to, right? And drawn to. And Laura is saying here that there's a universal principle or characteristic of women that men are attracted to. And so when I got into this chapter, I wish I had, I wish I had more time to, to talk about these these skills with you all. You, you've got to read the book. Um, when I got more into this chapter, you know, it's talking about letting your husband see the messy parts of you. And again, when you think back to when you're first dating someone, we always put our best impression forward. We are thinking about it a lot. I remember in the early dating years, and even when I was engaged, I was much more consumed with thoughts about things that I don't think were, they were more superficial. They were not, you know, I didn't have to be fully vulnerable because I still had an out in the relationship if I needed one, right? And it was, it was scary to show, you know, all of my emotions or to share every opinion that I maybe had because what if that was, what was a deal breaker, you know, and I was not married yet. And so, um, I thought of my engagement story when I read this chapter specifically and I wanted to share it with you. Here are, here are the few sentences that made me think of it. So she says that intimacy and closeness spring from the relief of admitting you're not at all perfect and finding out that you're still lovable. Intimacy thrives when you know you're safe. That's when you can relax in your own skin and reveal yourself. And that's what marriage is supposed to be. Marriage is supposed to be a commitment where you know you're safe and you feel safe. In fact, your vulnerability is what made your man fall for you above everyone else. He saw how delicate you are and felt that he could make a contribution by caring for you, comforting you, and protecting you. That's what made him want to commit to you forever. I do think maybe she's leaving a part out here um, because I do know, I do know men that they value a woman who is contributing to their life and sure that contribution could be in you know you you make him feel more masculine and make him feel needed and like you know he's the provider that his nature you know drives him to be right i do know men who look for not just you know a woman who can't take care of herself and who is just i think the epitome of weakness right I don't, I don't know if that's hundred percent all that men are looking for. I do think of course there are, there are men who want to have a woman who is going to help him, you know, build his empire. He's going to help him build his life, but that can, that can look a little bit differently for, you know, specific couples. And so I just wanted to mention, that. I did think of that, but this also more, more so reminded me of my engagement story. So I'm going to tell the quick version. Of course, not all the personal details will be here. Um, so my husband and I, we dated for what I would say is a long time. And that was not really something that I wanted. But in the end, I think that it was beneficial that we didn't date for six months and get engaged at that point. I do think, you know, we were able to see each other go through a variety of life situations and circumstances. And Ultimately, we had to get to a point where we were clear on what we both wanted and how you know we would build a life together. So the point where we finally got engaged was actually at what I would say is one of my weakest points in life. Probably the second most weakest that I can remember. The first one was right when I graduated college and I opened my first business and it failed. That was a very weak moment for me. But the second was right when I lost a job that I very much so loved. And my husband and I had been apart actually for a longer length of time before that. We had kind of parted ways because we realized that you know, as far as our career paths were going, we both kind of wanted to do different things that were to us what they seemed very mutually exclusive. I was planning on moving overseas and pursuing some work there and he did not at all <laughs> see that for his life. So we took some time separated and really focused on, you know, what, what were our careers doing and where were we going in life? 
However, I ended up losing my job and I ended up moving back. I had nothing. I was starting over completely from scratch, trying to figure out, that was the point where I worked five jobs and I was trying to figure out how am I going to provide for myself? Am I going to be able to start a business? I kind of wanted to start a business again. I wanted to work online. Do I need to go into an internship and get some experience working? You know, if I want to go into uh, tech and that was where I was. And I think that we had kind of started dating a little bit here and there again, once after I um, lost my job and I was trying to figure things out. And I think ultimately, you know, my husband was just in a place where he saw his ability to take care of me and protect me and provide for me. And he had a solid career going and a solid job and skills that he, he felt more confident in doing that than he did before. And so that was when we got engaged and it was a beautiful beach engagement and a very special memory for sure. So now we've been married for seven years and this is, this is what made me think of that because for so long beforehand, I had wanted nothing more than to get engaged and get married and have that security. I loved him, you know, and I just wanted the commitment, but I, I will admit, I know that I got to this place where I was going to just take care of myself and whatever I wanted in life, I was going to pursue it and go and get it and I didn't need anyone to help me. And oftentimes I do see a lot of women these days who, while I think it is wise to be able to have marketable skills for yourself to build a business, to be able to um, make a high living for yourself, I do think that we tend to push a lot of men out because we show that off a little much. Like maybe, maybe we keep those things and our abilities and our skills a little bit more on the DL and we, uh, show a little bit um you know to our men about how we need to be taken care of and provided for so that's something that i thought of you can continue reading this chapter there is one other part of this chapter that i thought you know this is this was my experiment for the week and laura claims you can stop fights with a single word and the word is ouch so instead of getting defensive in a disagreement i have been experimenting with just saying ouch as the one word and I think that, of course, she covers all of the questions you would ask, right? Rightfully so. There's some obvious things that you might be wondering about if your simple response to a disagreement is the word ouch. First of all, your man is probably going to, if he was like mine, going to say, what do you mean? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's a very unexpected response to some people. Um, so she covers all of that. And, but what I like about this one word response, and I, I do kind of agree with this, is that she says, ouch is great because it lets your husband know that you're hurt, but it does not say it's your fault or you did something wrong. And we talked a lot about that in the first skill. So you have to think about it from a different perspective if you want to get different results when you are having these disagreements and you're working on letting yourself be vulnerable and communicate that you're hurting, right? So you don't have to go into this deep emotional, long drawn out explanation of how you feel hurt and upset and describe all the feelings and all the reasons. Just say, ouch, and leave it at that. The only other thing I'll mention about that too is of course, um, she says at the end of this chapter that you may find yourself having some disagreements and big blowing up arguments that happen you know, frequently over and over and over again. And so just having the awareness of, could I have just responded with one word? Like after the fact, you can talk to a friend, talk to someone who supports you, talk to your therapist, someone that you can sort of bounce around the situation with and you feel safe and comfortable to do so. I don't know. I think that's a little bit tricky. You have to, of course, be very wise who you entrust, you know, to talk about your arguments with. It's the next chapter where I drew a question mark and I have some red flags. Chapter 20 is titled The Myth of Verbal Abuse. And I thought, is that really a myth? And why would she say that? Why would she say that verbal abuse does not exist? Because Certainly, I know there are some women watching this who have been in verbally abusive relationships, and maybe you've been the one who's been verbally abusive. She, she covers all of that in this chapter, and this 
this gave me a lot of food for thought and I would love to know in the comments, do you think that verbal abuse is a myth or not? Have you read this chapter? How did you take that? What I do like about this is she is saying to experiment with these skills. She's not saying that you have to do everything as she is laying it out, as Laura is laying it out here. Um, although I love all of the encouraging examples of other relationships and women that she's coached in her coaching business. Um, they are very encouraging to read these if you are in the in the situation but um <laughs> i just don't know i don't know she experiment you know you, she says you've got to just just try it if what you're doing is not working you still have hope for your relationship just try this she says your husband could be an exception but you won't know unless you experiment with the skills she even goes in to say that you could be the one who started the verbal abuse and you might have overlooked that. And if so, then I do think it's important to realize that and to go back in and say, you know, what about myself do I need to change in order to remedy that? And that takes a lot of vulnerability and humbling of yourself to do. So I recognized that. And now, you know, I can just give a, you know, flat out argument with the best of them a lot of the time um, that probably comes from growing up with three brothers and also my career. <laughs> um, not saying that I've, I've argued unprofessionally, but I've been able to take points that I feel need to be fought for, you know, and do that, you know, do the fighting for things that I believe in. And so here, Laura is very much challenging my thought process around, you know, defending yourself, right? That's, that's why I think it's so hard to be vulnerable. Um, and it, you know, you're afraid of losing what you've either worked so hard for or what you want so badly. And that is a normal human you know, emotion, but in marriage, it's so different. And maybe some women who have been married longer can speak to this a little bit more. And I mean, I mean, if you've been in a healthy marriage for a long time, you know, Maybe you have some insights that you can provide to being vulnerable in marriage and um, not being so defensive, right? Laura does say, you know, she is not dismissing that, you know, verbal abuse is a terrible experience and that there's a lot of women suffering through that horrible treatment of verbal abuse, someone who's verbally abusive. She says that's something that nobody should have to live with. So, you know, I did want to mention Laura is not saying to just kind of, you know, suck it up and deal with it and just listen to what your man says. Give this book a chance because it did make me think completely different about this idea that verbal abuse is a myth, but I'm not, I'm not hundred percent convinced of that. So chapter 21 is talking about getting off the fence. So how to get off the fence and be happy about it. I agree with this completely because I see a lot of women doing this as well. Sometimes um, with leveling up their life, they are sitting on the fence. They're afraid to get off the fence. They're afraid to take a step forward because they know that it's possible. They know that the life they want is possible. The same way that I think Laura's illustrating that women know that the marriage that they want and dreamed of with the man they're currently married to is possible. but. It takes a lot of vulnerability and a huge risk to get off the fence of, you know, am I going to leave or am I going to stay? Am I going to leave and level up with another man who's going to be better and, you know, fill in all of the gaps where I think my current husband is falling short. This is what this chapter is about. And so if that is you, if you are a woman right now reading this, you're married and you're considering leaving this chapter, I have a lot of respect because she is not just showing women who didn't leave, but she does give an example in this chapter of a woman who left and she goes through that experience um, that that woman has shared. So what I wanted to say is that the examples that are in this chapter are so encouraging to read. And there's a very intense one about a lady who was sitting on the fence. She had to leave her abusive husband and she ended up restoring and reconciling her marriage. And I have known some people in real life that have left their husbands, there's been infidelity in the relationship, and their husband took them back in the end, and they have been thriving in their marriage. And so I can't relate to this part of 
The Empowered Wife, but I wrote down here at the bottom that reconciliation is possible. And so if you are a woman who's either been on one side of infidelity or the other, I just wanted to say that as encouragement and encourage you to read this book because it may just change your perspective a little bit. That's to women who feel like there still might be hope. If you are already divorced and you have already been through it, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think that we can always learn from our past experiences no matter what and there's a reason for them. This is not to shame anyone who's already been divorced at all whatsoever. <laughs> um, I cannot speak to that, but I can say, you know, maybe there's some encouragement for you too in wherever you are now in life um, and things that you can, I don't know, reflect on and maybe find some, some healing in that. Maybe you've already found healing in that, but for those of you who haven't, it's, this is a, this is a very interesting perspective on reconciliation that I don't think is talked about very much at all. So finally, I'm going to talk about Chapter 22, how to get your husband back. Of course, we're wondering, what if I'm not the one who's on the fence about the marriage and it's all my husband who's distant, who is not showing me attention, who is just absorbed in work or whatever it is. This is for those ladies who are ready to get their man back. And I think that this is also a big kind of controversial topic or discussion. I guess I could speak to this a little bit because before I was married, you know, my husband and I, we did take that extended break. And I will say, like I said before, I think that it was in the end my vulnerability that made him come back to me and decide to commit in the end. And that is essentially what Laura is saying some of her students have done. She has said that they are showing pure vulnerability. They are removing themselves from complaining, from criticizing their husband or their man. And um, that has been the foundation for a reconciliation for them to get their man back. So it's not just about the way that you look, the way you're putting your life together, showing how strong you are and what you're capable of. While those things are very important, you should still you know, keep yourself up, of course. But what she's saying is that you know, to, to your man, that can be off-putting. And one of, one of the, the things I'll read here, she says, um, you might be thinking, my husband is repulsed by vulnerability. He hates it when I cry and he gets gruff or runs away. And that might lead you to thinking that the intimacy skills won't work with your man. I can see why you would feel that way. There's nothing worse than letting someone see your authentic grief or shyness only to have them respond with hostility or by abandoning you. Okay, and then she goes on and says, there is something being reflected back to me in my husband mirror. How scary is that to think of your husband as being a mirror for yourself? Because maybe we start to see some of our own flaws that we need to work on here. And that is hard. That's, that's a little off-putting to think about, isn't it? But she says, getting a, a defensive response instead of a soft, comforting one, because he is now wounded by my blame, shame, and criticism, and that will trump his instinct to protect and comfort me. So again, letting go of criticizing your man, not complaining, that's very hard, but being vulnerable, she's saying that's, that's where you're kind of, you got to start with that. Um, there is an example in this chapter, and there's this, this has a little bit more information, obviously. There's some characteristics that she shares um, that are recurring themes for women who have successfully had, you know, the vulnerability and reconciled their marriages. Very good to read. She's got episode 91 of the Empowered Wife podcast that you can check out and also mentions episode 105 for that woman's um, husband's response or kind of his take on their reconciliation of their marriage. So good stuff. The final chapter in this skill is called why sex is better when you're married and what to do if it's not. And I'm not going to cover that. I thought that this could be almost a whole entire video for itself. So I'll just say this, you know, if you find yourself in the situation in your marriage where this is an issue, you are going to want to read this chapter. And uh, even if it's not an issue currently, maybe you want to read this chapter to prepare yourself for any future issues that may arise and how you can um, 
how you can utilize this information or not utilize it because look, Here's the thing about books, courses, any information, videos that you watch here on YouTube, you can take what serves you and leave what does not. You can think about the different perspectives that you hear someone share from their own life experience and learn from that or say, that's not for me. And that's okay. Um, <laughs> I had a section in here that I had a lot of issues with. I'm definitely going to mention this in the final video, but I don't want to bring it up here because again, this is already 30 minutes, almost 30 minutes long. And I don't want to, I don't, I don't want anyone to tune out these important things. They are so helpful. And, um, even if there's some things that I'm just, I'm just sitting here thinking really, really is that is she serious about this right now? So thank you so much for joining me. And I appreciate all of your comments. I've enjoyed reading your take on this series. I've seen so many of you, I think by and far, that have said overall that this book and the information in this book has been life-changing. So there will be one more skill that I covered next week, and then I'll have a final wrap up a video where I'll talk about my relationships transformation, the things that worked for me. And I'm going to talk about those two, the two top controversial aspects or pieces of advice that I found in this book that I, I really, I really don't know. I don't know if I would recommend or not recommend. I think it would depend on the lady. So Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you in the next video. Again, if you have not caught up with one of these here on the screen or subscribed yet, please do and get this video a thumbs up. You know, that really helps me um, to help other women discover this discussion and share this with a friend that you think might find this helpful or intriguing. Start your own discussion about this book. I think more women need to be talking about this in the level up community, talking about our marriages and leveling up with our man versus seeing him as an obstacle to the life that we dream of. So until next time, bye.